Okay, now we go to the uh, session four, which is intended to um, highlight some bioimaging education and training opportunities in Latin America. And I am hosting uh, the session because uh, Hernandez Carvalho couldn't make it, but for some difficulties in the traveling, uh, so I took the the his 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 place, and I hope I will I will do it okay. So, um, first of all, before um, Kildare, Hernan, Kerry, and Gleb uh, will tell more about the different program they are they are running, I will try to do in a very short presentation what we are doing or what we are aiming to do um, in our working group for training and education in the Latin American bioimaging. So, okay, <clears throat> this working group uh, is conformed by Andres Rossi, Gabriela Casanova, Hernández Carvalho, Alenka Lobi, and myself. Uh, and we start to work uh, a couple of months ago uh, in discussion of what we uh, uh, have as a main goal. And I will try to go um basically what is the aim of this work this working group has the aim first aim of landscape the bioimaging training and education across latin america and what we really wanted to know is what is out there what kind of training we have what are you know the different disciplines that we are training uh, what are the level what are the target audience what are you know all the details that help us basically to understand the uh, profile of the microscopy that we have in Latin America. We also wanted to build a repository, repository, sorry, of training and education activities in our webpage, in you know, uh, handled by by the lobby. And basically, we wanted to also have an advertisement and create an agenda of the lobby uh, at the lobby webpage of all the events because. There is a lot of training out there in Latin America. Most of the time, we don't know when it happened. Uh, it has, it's not well communicated. And most of the time, it's not well coordinated. So we can have overlapping between the different activities, or we are not coordinating if, I don't know, in one semester, we have a, a you know, an, a, a low level or, you know, entry level training. And in the next semester, we have the super, you know, course of the super resolution microscopy or whatever. And if we can coordinate the things we believe, we can take better advantage of what we already have. So as I, as we say, we are trying to avoid duplication of training for and also serve as a connector. So as a basically pinpoint the different uh, um, uh, uh, initiatives across the Latin America in order to basically uh, have better and broader courses across the region. Um, one of the, 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 the goal and, and, and the, the understanding is, well, we know that there, there exist courses for, you know, very low and very high and intermediate level uh, of initiatives. So I, I truly believe that we need to put in order these uh, 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 initiatives uh, and try to coordinate between the different actors these things. Um, to do so, basically, the main goal now and the main task that we have across is to run a survey. And this survey need, in my opinion, need to be useful for LAVI. For LAVI to take a decision about what kind of uh, uh, you know, in each, what kind of support we are going to offer for courses. I don't know, if you have a course and you don't have funding, thanks to the CCI support, now we will have the chance to provide money for courses. The thing is, well, basically we need to know which are the target audience, so which are the courses around to support. Uh, and also, I think it will be nice if this survey can help or can support LAVI in quantitative information to take a decision about, you know, there is a lag that we need to address. There is courses that need to be 
implement because the region doesn't have this expertise or doesn't have this specific focus already developed. Well, these are the things that I hope we can do with, with this working group. And the last two things is I also think that we will be able to coordinate better with the existing uh, uh, training and education around the globe. And in particular, Gleb is going to talk today about what GBI is doing. The repository of GBI is really, really good, but also Bina, ABIC, AeroBioImagine, and many more initiatives across the world. Um, so uh, the last thing that is also probably a challenge that we have to cover is, well, there are existing courses for you know many of us who produce you know every year a workshop or every two years or whatever, uh, or existing course across the world. And sometimes uh, the language is still a barrier. And uh, I think it's important for LAVI and it's something that LAVI can do or support is trying to implement some sort of translation for the regional languages. So many, many tasks of ideas. So we pick two. The first thing is we are decoding now our last meeting, which was the meeting for the grantees of the last RFA, RFA that CCI ran and Latin American imaging, science, imaging uh, unit and facilities uh, were uh, uh, recipients of this grantee. And we have 13 grantees in this last row. So now we are decoding all this information, which is a lot. And the important thing is, well, now we can identify the people. Now we know how many types and how many numbers of programs are out, out there only from this small group of grantees. What are the topics? What is the existence of support and fellowship? And we are hoping that we can help Salavi in coordination and avoiding overlapping and avoiding, you know, these kind of things. Because, you know, we discussed this with uh, Vanessa and Nikki when we have this meeting and Vina was supported as Vina. So everything is organized in a central thing. Now we have 13 grantees and something that is going to happen for sure is that there will be overlapping. There will be in some, uh, not, not in, in the bad way, take me in the, in the good way. There will be competition for time. There will be competition for students. So can Lavi, help and support in avoiding this unnecessary, in my opinion, competition. Well, I think this is the kind of role that this group, working group can do. And the other important thing to basically survey the region is, well, we are preparing this uh, uh, Google form uh, in where we will try to reach one by one and through all our communication, um, the bioimaging people across Latin America to understand what is out there. So with this, I will like to uh, uh, stop my presentation and uh, call to the first speaker, which is Kildare Miranda. Let me see. Thanks, Adel. So here I am again, <laughs> my last talk, I promise. So uh, I'm just uh, going to throw a few slides to, to show our um, uh, recent, actually uh, kind of old initiative, but that had uh, recent progress uh, uh, at our university, uh, which relates to the creation of a graduate program in bioimaging and structural biology or biostructural, biostructural technologies. So the idea started from the what we already uh, discussed here. So we uh, have the, these, uh, I think that most of the places that work with bioimaging have this ambition to be able to work uh, in a biological phenomenon from the atom to the whole animal. And uh, some places uh, uh, have been working in, in getting equipment and qualified personnel uh, 
to do this type of work. And uh, in Brazil, we uh, we uh, um, have several groups working in, in different uh, places uh, that were submitted to a, a critical diagnosis of the system of the instruments that we have installed in the installed base in different places and and people working in different subjects. And uh, one thing that uh, that came out from these uh, critical diagnosis is that we have a lot of people working this. It's, what we've been discussing here in the past few days, you know, uh, we have a lot of people, qualified people working on the, on the techniques or on development of, of technologies. And uh, we don't have really um, um, uh, a, a path, a correct career path for, for this uh, uh, type of, of uh, professional. So uh, most of the times uh, you have uh, the, someone that is specialized in some technique just by accident because they were studying some uh, uh, models and then became uh, uh, in love with the technique and then developed this, uh, this side of the technique. So uh, the idea was to put together a group of, group of people that, been, that, that, that works with this uh, type of technology and try to form a graduate program so that we'll have uh, ma a master's and doctor degrees on uh, bioimaging. So the, the whole idea is to be able to uh, cross scales at a, a, as I just mentioned. And this is something that we uh, we have people around that are working on the prototyping of molecules, structure characterization uh, by NMR or uh, in the side of microscopy, for instance, uh, electron microscopy. This is a, 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 an example of the facility that I run there, and we have other centers at Senepain or in Minas Gerais that Greg runs. So it's uh, uh, we have a, a number of instruments, and for each of these instruments, we have uh, a lot of dedicated people. And uh, as as you know, and um, Sorry, and, and also we have uh, some people trained in some equipment to do uh, bioimage of tissues, organs, and, and whole animals. And as you know, all these uh, type of uh, technologies uh, um, demand a lot of, a lot of, a lot of effort from uh, the different groups involved. And then we came up with the, the idea of this uh, um, graduate program. So the mission of the gra graduate program is, uh, uh, so our, uh, missions to train high qualified, highly qualified personnel in the development and application of bioimaging and biostructural technologies at masters and doctoral levels. So the idea is to develop uh, techniques, either protocols or new instruments that we have. We have a few initiatives in in different places, but it's very hard for them to to uh, for the researchers to put a, a doctor or master program, unless this is linked to a certain uh, a biological phenomena, a thematic program, uh, either in, in tropical diseases or uh, cancer biology or neurodegenerative uh, disease and all, all these type of things. It's a, a pure uh, program for the development of these technologies. We don't have it yet in the country, and, and I believe that we don't have it in, in Latin America. Uh, so, and the idea is to meet the demands of the productive sector in academia. So new technologies based on qualification of uh, personnel, innovation of instruments and, and methods. So this is something that we lack a lot. It's nothing new. We just want to, to uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. It's something that we miss in the region and we want to, uh, to try to do it in an organized way and being able to certify these professionals. So the, our vision is to create this program that will integrate groups in, in Brazil and also in Latin America. So it's a, a, a program that, that will be considered, um, uh, it will be a, a, a form of professional that will be considered very uh, highly qualified, both for academia and uh, for, the, for industry. And uh, so this will be uh, uh, something that may may uh, drive innovation in Brazil and Latin America in, in the, the same way that we have uh, in other countries. So uh, uh, the main areas of concentrations are now structure of molecules, imaging of, of cells and tissues, and imaging of whole organisms. 
This is the, the main uh, idea. And for, for short-term goals, implement the, the graduate program, implement a structural program that can uh, do a self-assessment. So it's very important, it's very important that we uh, are able to uh, reshape the whole program once we see the outcome, once we receive the, the criticism from the, the, um, the scientific community, from the industry. So the idea is to, to elaborate a curriculum for training individuals uh, to work in technical and scientific challenges, but also be able to shape or reshape the, the format of the, the program uh, once we, uh, we have the first uh, result. Uh, in the, uh, for the midterm goals, uh, we want to deepen the objectives of the, of the program. So um, enabling uh, a work on the development and uh, to represent real, original, creative contribution in the area of, uh, of bioimaging. So this is a, uh, every, uh, every time that we have a lot of pressure to publish uh, in a certain area, you have your competitors. Uh, this this uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, tension and uh, uh, an environment that has a lot of tension is not uh, uh, a creative environment. So the idea is to have people staring at the microscopes or at the instruments and thinking about uh, what they can do, what they can change there. So the idea is to stimulate uh, this technical scientific research for development of new methods, uh, simulate the dissemination of the activities developed by this program to other geographic regions. So we, uh, our strategy to approve this program in Brazil was to uh, start small, only inside our university, because it would be very, very hard to approve it at the federal level with several institutions uh, together, because they would, uh, this would demand approval in all the councils of the, of the, the uh, other institutions. They would uh, demand uh, some uh, uh, funding to have people moving around. So it would be very uh, 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 hard to do. Uh, that so the strategy was to start small because once once it's approved, uh, those that we put on board, this is a decision from the the institution from the university. We are evaluated every uh, four years. After four years, if our decisions were not good, if we put a lot of people on board and the program fails, it's our responsibility. Uh, but if it uh, 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 works well, then we can uh, increase our uh, degree and have more uh, support from the federal government. So that's the, our um, uh, strategy. And for the long-term uh, goals is to establish the importance of such graduate program uh, within the area of bioimaging and uh, um, uh, have recognition uh, from the community. So the idea is to say, okay, uh, let's say a new lab that established a new uh, uh, microscopy facility or a company that purchased a microscope and says, okay, I, I have to train a person in, in this uh, technique. So they have a network of laboratories that could uh, develop some uh, uh, work together with the company or, or uh, together with the group that is establishing this new uh, facility and then uh, train and develop a joint project or even just give support for uh, someone else's uh, uh, project so that in, in the process we'll have uh, uh, someone trained. So, and then evaluation improves selection process for the missions is something that we don't know what, what will happen. The, those that will appear, uh, if our selection process will be uh, 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 efficient or not, maybe it will be a complete mess. So it's, the, it's something that we have to, to, um, to uh, work with. Uh, to consider, have to establish, as I mentioned, the self-assessment process and evaluate and, if applicable, revise the curriculum structure of the program, analyze the results and, and uh, uh, see what, what, what is the, the real out, outcome of the, the program. So what, it, what differentiates this, this program from the other ones that, uh, uh, that we have in Brazil or in the university? So this is really, really dedicated to the development of the Te technology or protocols or so it's uh, the idea is to uh, value the product not 
by the papers that it uh, produces or not by uh, filling a certain uh, certain criteria that we have for uh, regular graduate programs, but to uh, advance to develop the the uh, career. So we we the bioimage the career of the imaging scientists in, in bioimaging. Uh, and uh, those that engage to the program would have free access to the imaging platforms uh, of the proposing units. So the idea is that we will give access so to the time, the instrument time uh, for developing their uh, uh, thesis would certainly give something back to the facility or to the lab that runs this, uh, 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 this machine. Uh, and then we, we, uh, the idea is to, to uh, become a reference program. So we have to balance between uh, this time and the time that the facility, had, the facility has to run as, as a real facility. Uh, but uh, this is something that we, we tend to do to stimulate the whole program. Uh, and establish a, a strong cooperation with different companies. As I mentioned, it's, uh, it's something uh, important. I'll just... Uh, 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 I'd just like to mention that the, the target audience for, uh, is for, to Brazil and abroad. We can have cooperation programs with different uh, institutions. And the idea is to have uh, technologists or technicians from education or research institutions that already work with uh, uh, or intend to work with uh, bioimages, uh, biomedical and medical imaging professionals. So this is something that uh, they always have to be trained uh, abroad or, or somewhere else. It's something that we want to to bring to the universe. Professors, uh, professionals in, uh, from microscopy companies, uh, graduates looking for a professional profile uh, uh, for the development of new diagnostic or therapeutic products. So this is something that just apply a technique to some to uh, uh, um, a, a, a goal like uh, uh, diagnosis of therapeutics and masters and, and doctors in the, these different uh, areas, as I mentioned, and researchers uh, from educational and research institutions that, that intend to move to bioimaging. Uh, some, uh, some examples, the su successful examples that we have there, for instance, this is uh, just an adaptation of a crab trap in a FIPSAM. So this is just an example of some things that we do that is really, really uh, simple, but could be part of a, a of a master thesis or or a doctor thesis. So there we have a, a FIPSEN system, and we had an old microscope with a cryo trap uh, uh, adapted to it, a commercial cryo trap. And uh, to purchase a new cryo trap, we had to invest like three hundred thousand uh, euros, and uh, we invested. How much, Vanya? Maybe twelve thousand reais, and we did it. This would be like three thousand dollars today, and we just adapted. We rebuilt the the, the internal parts uh, of the this uh, the connection of the prior trap with the microscope. We uh, did the performance tests, and uh, in the end, now we have a, a high resolution cryo electron microscope. Uh, with uh, beautiful images. This is a, a, a FIBSEM, so we, we can also do cryolamella preparation. So a lot of things uh, that we can do with this uh, uh, instrument with a very, very, very uh, um, uh, few investments, very, very low amount of money compared to a, a new system. And we've been doing, I, I won't uh, detail all the projects that we have, but um, uh, we had a, a prototype for a fast scan AFM. Unfortunately, the colleague that was leading this uh, program, we are, were already starting to see malaria infected cells, live cells by AFM, seeing the surface of the so really nice. But unfortunately, our colleague that worked uh, uh, worked in this project passed, and and we uh, we didn't uh, have a chance to conclude the the project, but. We have a lot of other uh, examples, uh, spray freezing with subsection uh, resolution. So a lot of the uh, small developments that are just side projects are not really uh, a main project for a master or PhD program from so for, from someone. So this is more or less what we we are thinking, and we would be very glad to to have other people on board as well and other groups. And where are we now? So the project was already submitted to the federal government because we have to have a, a federal agency to certify the diplomas that we give 
right? Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to do it. And uh, we are hoping that uh, um, uh, by the, the, the first quarter of the next year, we have everything approved. And once we do that, we can already start our program. So this is uh, what I had to say. And I thank you very much. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Hildare. We will have a round for discussion after the presentation. So our next speaker is uh, Professor Ana Greco from Universidad de Buenos Aires, Argentina. And he's also, he's also going to, to tell more about uh, his initiative of uh, on education in bioimaging. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Janelle, Andres, the other Andres as well. Uh, thanks for organizing this wonderful meeting and inviting me. And I think one overarching topic of all these sessions has been giving the recognition to the people that, that enables to do our work and the work of everybody in the microscopy area, right? So the people who do development of microscope of software that organize networks, the people that um, uh, uh, manage facilities, all those people need to be recognized. And, and of course, our tech technicians and professionals as well. So I think one something that we need to realize is how to do this properly, how to recognize the work. And hopefully, I think that we, we realize that providing a career path to those people is also a way to give recognition. So I would like to sh discuss with you our initiative to give community building through a structure and cohesive tra training program. So I'm a professor at the University of Buenos Aires, particularly at the School of Sciences that we call Exactas, even though it's also natural sciences. And it's, it's a large university, it's like model, like many Latin American universities is huge, both in relative and absolute uh, levels, it has like 400 professors, 800 TAs, 1,200 PhD students, it has 19 CONICET institutes inside and has 900 researchers. So it's huge, like 10% of the scientific output of the country comes from that School of Sciences and around 25% of the national uh, PhD students in our areas come from our School of Sciences. So it conveys everything from biology to chemistry, computer sciences, earth sciences, math, physics. So it's a wonderful place to do interdisciplinary science in there. And we are working harder to break the barriers between the departments. So, you know, to, to tell you how we arrived to our current program, I would like to talk about three points in time. One is 2002, for those who know Argentinian history, 2001 was a particular difficult year in our uh, life. Uh, well, every year is difficult in Argentina, but this 2001 was particularly hard. And you know, in 2002, a lot of the researchers were doing, isolating themselves from others in order to continue to do their work. There were a few people that realized that the only way to move forward was through community building. And so actually Leah is here and she with others founded the Center for Advanced Microscopy, which has been a milestone and a very important piece of the ecosystem in Argentina, in our university, but also nationwide. And this center, it's around service, research and training. So we have a scientist working there that do their own research, but also they give high quality service for other scientists in other fields. And also they do a lot of training. And you know, this was a wonderful thing to, for me to, to see because how people are able to invest their own time, their own grants, their own resources to get something that uh, improves the community. So thank you, Leah, for this. And the Center for Advanced Microscopy became a, a, a meeting point, not just from different departments, but also from different disciplines. This has always been a microscopy for me, a place in which people with a lot of different backgrounds meet, and therefore we need to build a common language. A second uh, milestone I want to mention is in 2007, I started to work in Dortmund in the Max Planck there. And the diversity that I was used to in the physics department was very little, very small compared to what I've seen in what I was uh, seen in Dortmund. So we have to build that like a training program for our PhD students, undergrads, and also for our TAs and, and, and researchers that were coming every year to the department. And so it was very interesting that uh, how we can uh, if we invest time in people, then this multiplies enormously because we had a lot of different microscopes. And of course, nobody was um, with all the knowledge to get them to use. Also, it was very interesting to see the uh, Philippe Bastians, who was the, the head of that department, you know, continually talk about this, de uh, develop enabling technologies. There was a lot of people 
is spending time to build things that maybe were not going to be on the paper that but made other papers possible. Actually, a lot of the things that we do did there over those years were developed by people that invested time in say in core aspects, right? In software, in hardware, in, in in different type of analysis methods. I was also lucky enough to participate as, as a delegate of the institute into the Euro, first Eurobioimaging meetings. And to my uh, um, impression was if these people who have much more money than we do in Argentina or in Latin America, they have more, more, much more access to resources, they have much more access to training, are getting together to bond and to find better ways to share resources. I mean, we should do the same, right? It was very clear to me. And then in 2013, I came back to Argentina to found my own group that we work uh, around understanding the three-dimensional structure of biological systems. And for this, we need to develop a lot of uh, microscopy equipment um, and, uh, and of course, mathematical methods. And some of those uh, work, which is like things like, like look like this on an optical table, we actually interact with people in the industry department to transform into this, which is, oops, sorry, our, uh, let's say, version of a much more user-friendly microscope, laser scanning, uh, sorry, a light sheet microscope. And so, again, we had to invest time into shows, into do something that will not be able to publish by itself because it's, but uh, this uh, thing that we build on an optical table, it's unusable for many people. The same thing happened with this column on the right. You know, um, of course we build a lot of software. Most of the time we build our software to scratch our own itches, right? Um, for me also software is a way to, to relax. Uh, with, uh, it's, it's weird, but it's like this. And so I was building a lot of software and at some point I tried to start to package it so that more people could use it. And again, this was my first works in open source. And um, I started to get a lot of fixes and patches and suggestions and ideas, community building, right? If you provide something and you give enough uh, of a base level so that other people can join you, people will join you if you provide good things. And uh, some things I build like PyVisa is the, one of the most used software for controlling devices. Lance is a software also used by other labs to control instruments. And Pint is um, a library for units, physics unit I did in Germany, so I had to connect it with beer somehow. Um, anyway, when I came back to Argentina, something that I found is that this idea that Leah has envisioned with others uh, had grew a lot, right? They were, the, the agencia was financing large institutional equipment. They were not giving any more large equipment to groups, but to institutions. The Sistema Nacionales, in, in particular this microscopy, was giving money to maintain and upgrade equipment, and also to do training as long as you keep the equipment available to the public. And CONICET was starting to give money not only to technicians, uh, but to, uh, let's say, a different type of technicians with a, a degree in physics, math, biology, um, that, that those people require training, require um, continued support. And so we started to, to realize that on top of this, we need something that brings all of these people together, that builds all these possibilities together and try to create a program for people going into <laughs> microscopy that will require some extra training to fully use the okay, microscope. Enough, right? Something that, that we saw at that well, time did. is that people Thank were- Thank you, I'll try to let you know. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> so, something that we saw at that time is that people were using the microscope that they had at available instead of the microscope that they actually need to use, right? And that, that is a very common feature. And that's how, when we decided to create this thing, which is a Carrera Especialización en Microscopía. It's a one year official postgraduate degrees. For those who, of you who don't know the Argentinian system, it's basically, there are four types of postgraduate degrees. The PhD, which is around four years, the master's or maestría, which is two years, and this carrera de especialización, I, I'd rather not translate it just because I don't know what will be the correct legal name. It's, it's a degree which was created or a type of degree that was created that has to connect with needs either in the academy or in the public, in the private sector, in the industry. There has to be something that is really hands-on and that allows you to go back to work quickly. It's not, a, a, an, let's say, a purely academic title, right? And that's how we created this Carrera de Especialización. By the way, uh, as I was saying, the university is huge. So it's really slow to take decisions. And, and that's actually an understatement. It's frozen to take decisions. But this was approved in just six months. 
right? Which was, I was very happy about this. Um, basically, I'm not going to go into detail, but briefly, it's about 500 hours. It was originally envisioned as a purely um, course to, to be on site. But due to the pandemic, we realized that maybe we could connect some hands-on intensive training uh, on site with some remote synchronous and asynchronous um, uh, lectures, because that might be a way to reach people which are far away from big cities as well, right? And to be to make this available to 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 trainees. So it starts with a microscope fundamentals lecture series, which this uh, is, is supposed to bring people together from different disciplines. We will have here people from biology, math, computer sciences, engineering, chemistry. Who knows, right? And we need somehow to build a common language. So here we will have some common lectures, but also some distinct lectures to be able to have them all on the same page. Then we have the first part is focused around the microscope. So we, we discuss how is the imaging principles of optical microscope, scanning probe microscope, electron microscope. It's around the equipment. And then in the second part, it's around the sample. So the question is not long anymore. What is this microscope doing? But, you know, I want to get this information. What is the best technique? Or with the techniques to actually get this information out, okay? And and this is again the idea is that people stop using the microscope that they have around, but they decide the microscope that they solve the particular problems. On the side, we have this microscope seminar series. I will go into that in a minute, and the uh, lectures, and maybe they go into further training afterwards, right? And so what we aim to do is to basically lay a common foundation for microscopy operators and users. We see that people in different labs, they have very different knowledge. So by providing this common foundation, they will be able to interact more. We also hope to reach local, national, and hopefully regional centers as well. The, this, this thing is open to everybody, basically. Um, we would like to improve the coordination with policymakers. That means that we don't want just to, uh, uh, you know, accept people, um, that are disconnected with their institutions, for example. So we hope to build also a community of alumni. There's uh, something that is going on very commonly in the country that people ask, you know, the professors that they have got in the past or whatever. But we think that if we have a group of students going through this together, they will be connected across the country. And this microscopy seminar series is not a fixed thing, but it's something that will be renewed periodically. So all students from every single year will be able, will be invited to attend if they want to, and they get together uh, periodically. And finally, we articulate with more specific training programs. It's not our goal to disrupt any other training program that is around in the region or in the country, but rather interact with them by providing a common ground that by people that comes out of this program, they already know about certain things. So now I can. Okay, so why we do this in our university? We know we already have this teaching infrastructure for sample preparation, data acquisition, data analysis, and for lectures. And because we have also the research lab, we have a lot of the high-end equipment the students will be able to use. The hope is to give some insight into optical scanning probe and electron microscopes by discussing some common grounds, but then allow the students to go some specific about them. We also have the structures, which is great. And because it's a degree granting institution, we can actually, as I mentioned already, get this approved. Well, it is already approved by the university and provide an official title that it would also give technicians and professionals working in the different centers a career path that they can follow, right? So uh, with that, I reach to an end. I thank you uh, for your attention and I will be happy to answer any question that you have afterwards. Thank you very much, Lan. Um... Uh, now I have the pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Kerry Thompson uh, from University of Galloway, a lecturer of School of Medicine. And Kerry, can you hear me? Thank you. Okay. So thank you uh, very much for, for inviting me here to participate in, in the meeting. I would love to be with you in person, um, but unfortunately I, I couldn't travel at this time. And some of the talks I've heard have been wonderful and it's really inspiring to see um, a community forming. And it's something actually very similar to what I'm trying to do myself in Ireland in an Irish context on a much smaller scale. And it's proving equally as difficult. So I have great admiration for you for, for really trying to, to extend it across so many countries. 
Um, so I, I also like uh, Lionel and my seat that I fundy and um, uh, my, my, my program is to develop doctoral education um, and graduate education in microscopy and imaging. So like they said, I'm based in the University of Galway. We've just gone through a major rebranding and um, I am based in the School of Medicine and I am an anatomist and a microscopist by trade. Um, so briefly, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about the program that I've developed in the past and what I'm working on currently, and also a little bit about where we are in Galway and then continue with some of the other topics that we, we've discussed. So we're in Galway, which is in the west coast of Ireland. So we're um, pretty much on a periphery of Europe um, and definitely uh, the furthest point in the country and the furthest university on the west coast. Um, so we are it established as a small fishing village um, and then the city grew around it and we are famous for the Cladder Ring. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but also it very much is a city of the arts and culture. Um, we are also one of the major global hubs um, for medical devices in the country and uh, biomedical engineering with 80% um, of the world's stents being produced here. So we have a, a very a good relationship with uh, the companies that are based. So similar to the previous speakers in this session, we try to tailor the needs of these programs that we develop to the needs of the community that they actually um, were trying to serve. So particularly the local industry. Um, so like I said, I'm currently working as a C that I fundee. So I'm a research fellow and an assistant professor in anatomy. So prior to this, I've worked as a, a postdoc and a core facility scientist for, for six or seven years. Um, and after that period, I was taken on as an assistant professor and my remit was to develop um, an MSc in microscopy and imaging. Again, very similar to the two previous speakers. We went through the whole process um, and similar constraints were placed on me um, as in a time period to make this program successful. Um, so the program has actually been shelved as of 2020 because I took up my seeds that I funding. Um, but I can empathize with all of you um, on the work and uh, the career um, trajectories that you have to plan for and also the curriculums that you have to design. So we very much focus this on the development of these transferable and independent study and research skills. I wanted my graduates to be able to leave with um, real skills that they could employ, be employed with, but also be put to use in either industry or academia, depending on which career pathway they wish to choose. So we did a lot of work on um, experimental design, sample preparation, and then the practical use of this imaging equipment, and also then the subsequent analysis of those images that they generated themselves as part of their projects. Um, in semester one this year, then I, um, after having the experience of developing the MSc program, it allowed me to develop uh, the program that I put together for the CZI application, which is looking at graduate education, not just in our own university, but also across Ireland and how we can implement that. So last year, um, I ran a graduate um, course in three different topics. So light microscopy, electron microscopy and bioimage analysis. And these were very much the pilot programs for this scheme. So I had 47 responses and some students took two courses and the majority of them were either in second or third year of their PhD. Uh, it was a multidisciplinary cohort as well. We took people from biomedical engineering to earth and ocean sciences, to pathology, to plant and agri-biosciences. So we were really trying to make these programs very inclusive so people could really get the most out of um, participation and also broadening their, their horizons and their skills. It was eight weeks, so we ran a theory and practical content um, as part of the programmes, and they were predominantly online, the, the lectures were. Uh, this was because there were COVID restrictions in place at the time, so they weren't really allowed to book in teaching halls. Um, but the real goal of it was to introduce the facility and the staff team. So these are the students who would be in the future coming to work with us. So we wanted to introduce the notion of the core facility and what we could do and what the type of work that we could help them and able to do as part of their own research. So very much teaching the fundamentals, again, how we, how we operate microscopes, what do we do with them and looking at different disciplines, how we can implement these things. So we, again, focused on sample preparation and very much image analysis workflows. And we were able to engage with these people then very much on their own specific project queries and deal with them, their own questions. So it was very personable to them because it was small group teaching. 
we assessed them through continuous assessment, and then we also incorporated their own feedback for their own professional development. So again, very much creating them, um, trying to create an independent thinker, and also how how best they can apply these these feedback to their own practical work going forward. Um, it was a lot of group work and a lot of projects, and again, a lot of peer review. So they were implicit in their own teaching. They they were part of this bonded group. And they um, it really worked quite well. I think it was very heartening to see the progress over those eight weeks and see how the students interacted with each other as they were from such disparate backgrounds most of the time. Um, so we used, again, different types of, of free and open source um, software. So this is just an example of Cell Profiler, the, the class that we were doing online. And they did these group presentations. They were actually teaching each other about the different types of packages that were available. It was one of the assessments I set them. And for them, then, you know, they, they had to realize what they didn't understand themselves. And then how do you go about teaching that? So it was, I thought that was really, really enjoyable. Um, and then we talked about, again, like I was saying, the very the fundamentals, like how do you how do you incorporate perhaps a medical device into a tissue? So this is from one of our research groups based in anatomy. And they did um, a showcase for us and, and uh, explained their work in their studies. Um, and they also produced some open source um, teaching materials for them to use within their own laboratories and share with their own graduate students. So I thought that was, again, quite useful for them, but also for the environment around them. So thinking about how they themselves can develop, but also how they can develop um, the people around them and bring them on. So the plan for next year um, is to refine these modules again based on the feedback that's been collected and how and then to advertise again for candidates uh, for semester two next year and also this summer. So I'm also hoping to host some maker workshops and building 3D printed systems with some of our post grants. So very much, you know, capitalizing on the, the maker movement. That's, that's really strong, community led and developed at the moment. Um, but also some short, uh, short targeted courses for the MSc uh, classes that we have on campus. So not the program I, run, I ran previously, but the other programs that are there. So how do we use microscopy for research? How do we carry out very basic bioimage analysis? So upskilling the community as a whole. Um, so from 23 onwards, we're hoping to have some new equipment on campus. And uh, these will be new collaborations and new training programs based around this equipment with universities across Ireland. Um, so through these, then I'm hoping that the students, uh, we can have some sort of a memorandum of understanding so the students can get this for credit um, uh, recognition of their participation in these events across the country. So like you, I'm trying to carry out um, some surveying and uh, I'll talk to you about that in a second. So where do we go from here? Um, I think everyone recognises the online events have been wonderful. We wouldn't be here as a community, I think, without them at this stage, despite the limitations that we've had from the pandemic. But they really can't replace the need for hands-on training in the imaging field. Um, and again, how do we upskill ourselves as the providers of this education? We too need to be aware of the need for training and education opportunities that we take part in. So we're thinking about maybe teaching and training education modules as you go forward as a community and the pedagogy, the science of teaching. How do we teach um, and how do I teach? Is, do we have a reflective practice? Are we research informed and led? And can we participate perhaps in some of these train the trainer events? Um, ourselves to better ourselves to best ensure that our graduates leave with these transferable skills. Okay, so part of this is obviously community development. And again, we've heard lots of people speak about community development over the past number of days. And um, so we again, you know, promoting the importance of these well-funded cores and platforms is something that's part of my remit, but uh, not just in my home institute, but nationally. And again, how do we communicate these needs across the whole community to the principal funding bodies in the government that I've heard some of your previous speakers talk about. And again, education is very much at the core of all of these. So like you, we've surveyed the community. I'm, I'm happy to, to share um, if anybody wants to talk about um, how this, this survey was created. Um, please get in touch. I'm happy to help out with that or even offer advice or uh, whatever. So we surveyed the community to see what training opportunities were required, what was needed. Um, and also, would people be willing to train and teach and to try and figure out what courses were available? Um, so the majority of respondees were, were saying that, yes, they would like to be involved in training or teaching. Some were a little hesitant, I guess, maybe with time constraints. 
Um, and some then, most again, were willing to be listed on some sort of a skills database. You know, how do we go forward from here and how do we capitalize on the people who want to take part in this? And um, so the same types of things that were identified again, so very much, you know, image analysis, the fundamentals, hands-on training. So things that we know and that keep coming up time and time again. So what I also want to mention to you is my work with the Royal Microscopical Society. So I'm the Honorary Secretary for Outreach and Education for the RMS as well. Um, and they offer some wonderful training um, opportunities as part of um, the society. So the first one of them that I think I would like to draw to your attention, which you may or may not be aware of, um, is the RMS Diploma. So here, uh, this is very much a professional qualification for people to improve and develop um, their own part uh, of their microscopy skills and achieve a qualification towards it. Um, it's a flexible portfolio-based qualification, and um, it's similar to be of a standard of a master's degree. Uh, we welcome international participants, and if you have any questions, please reach out to get in touch. Um, and uh, you can find out more information about it here on the link there at the bottom. And um, we have seven current um, diplomats and they are very multidisciplinary in nature. And again, all the information about the current projects that are underway um, are available online. So please check it out if it's something you're interested in. Um, we're also hoping to devise um, a chartered microscopist accreditation accredited through the RMS. And we're looking at our bylaws at the moment, um, which we have to alter slightly. But we're hoping that more information will be available um, in the next 12 months on this and that the program get, might get up and running. Um, something else that we've recently just launched uh, is the application coaching and professional mentoring scheme. So, again, the career pathways that we have currently in, you know, or the lack of career pathways often as, as imaging scientists, um, we, we often don't have a direct maybe mentor or person who we can reach out to who perhaps follows the exact same course as us. So within the RMS, this was very clearly recognized and we recently launched um, this mentoring scheme. So uh, again, more information available online. Should you be interested, please reach out. Um, and the last thing is for your students, uh, we have free RMS membership for um, one year. Uh, so again, please please check it out if it's something you'd like to take part in. Um, we have an early career committee which do wonderful things, a little fabulous um, bite-sized bio type little chunks of um, videos. They have a YouTube channel. Um, they're really, really active on social media. So I would urge you as PIs or perhaps even if you have your students at the meeting here to go check them out. They really, really, really engage with the community and some fabulous stuff really being put out by them. And again, just to flag that there is an international meeting hopefully taking place next July in Manchester. So this is the Microscience Microscopy Congress. And it would be wonderful uh, to be able to see some of the community and, and the Latin American bioimaging community maybe take part in it. And so that's in July next summer. And we're hoping very much for it to be an in-person meeting. I wanted to thank um, you all for inviting me to participate here today. It's been a really interesting session so far and, and some of the speakers, it's, it's wonderful to get the reaffirmation. I think that, you know, these struggles are common and that people are, are facing these, these same issues all over the world and, and that there is a global movement to try and rectify some of these, these problems that we're encountering. I wanted to thank my own technical team um, that I work with very closely. None of this would be possible without their help and their support. Um, see that I for funding me and also Science Foundation Ireland for the new funding uh, for the new equipment we hope to get in the next 12 months. And thank you very much for the invitation again to participate. So I will hand it back to Lionel and the next speaker. Thank you very much, Kerry, for your nice presentation. Wonderful program. So our next speaker is uh, Glev Grevnev, uh, a training program manager from Global Bioimaging. Uh... So, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending my talk. So today I would like to present my observations on trends in imaging scientists training. So specifically core facility staff and core facility directors. So uh, opportunities um, and trends in imaging scientists training. So I come from Global Bioimaging, which is a global network of imaging infrastructures and core facilities and imaging communities around the globe. 
uh, at the moment we have 11 partners uh, representing every single populated continent. Uh, Latin America Bioimaging was the very last partner that has joined Global Bioimaging and we hope that more partners will join in the future. So my role at Global Bioimaging is uh, to manage a training program uh, which involves job shadowing, uh, organizing training courses for core facility staff and also uh, managing and scaling up the training resource that we have recently established. And the coordination team, which is relatively small, is based in Germany at EMBL in Heidelberg. So when I look at the trends in training imaging scientists, I categorize them into four avenues or four opportunities. So one of them is the job shadowing which is an on-the-job training opportunity where you go from one imaging core facility to another to learn from your colleagues in that imaging facility. And it can be in the same country or in a different country or even across the continent. And it can be used for education of technical and managerial staff. Uh, the second training opportunity is quite obvious. It's the courses and workshops. But when it comes to core facility staff and imaging scientists, the courses and workshops, they need to uh, have a very specific list of topics. So, for example, uh, establishing cost models, pricing strategies, budgeting, accounting, time management, various number of soft skills, persuasion, negotiation, and those skills are generally not part, taught as part of the traditional research uh, master's or PhD programs. Uh, the next opportunity is independent learning, and that includes your e-learning platforms, um, various resources and training, and also databases. Uh, uh, thankfully, there are quite a few uh, platforms already available, and I will mention uh, some of them to you in the coming slides. And lastly, as Kerry has mentioned, there's mentoring. So mentoring is one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunity, and it's used to advance uh, one's career. So this is when a less experienced mentee is being taught by a more experienced mentor. So first, starting with the job shadowing. So job shadowing can be set up on three different levels, on a national level, on a regional level, and on a global level. So one of the success story on, of establishing job shadowing program on a national level comes from German Bioimaging. I believe it was one of the first programs that was established and they made it successful, not just because of the coordination, but also because of they were providing travel grants to cover uh, accommodation and transportation costs. On the regional level, uh, CTLS, which is a core technologies for life science. It's, uh, I believe, European wide organization for all of the core facilities. So not just imaging, but also proteomics, genomics and other umbrella technologies. And they also have a very successful uh, job shadowing program where they um, allow a visit for up to one week and they also provide travel grants. Uh, moreover, they have expanded their job shadowing for staff exchange where you have two people traveling to each other's core facilities. And on a global level, so Global Bioimaging has a job shadowing uh, program where you can travel between different countries or even continents. Uh, as the duration of the visit is actually set by a host and it's slightly bigger for biomedical imaging facilities. And thankfully for uh, to the CZI funding, we can also provide travel grants. So what um, combines the success of all those programs is actually having travel grants. Uh, within Global Bioimaging, so uh, we have 24 hosts available on every single continent. Uh, the program is varied, uh, so it's open to facility managers and imaging specialists. And uh, we have a support for travel until end of next year. And since 2016, we had about 55 job shadowing applications. Uh, and this is opportunity that's open to any imaging scientist from Latin America. So anybody who's interested to uh, travel to another core facility to learn from their peers is welcome to apply. Uh, when it comes to courses and workshops, uh, Global Bioimaging is also involved here. So we focused our training on core facility scientists because this is an excellent way to increase capacity. Uh, currently, most of the courses were free, uh, were, virtu were virtual in nature, and we're moving to in-person courses. And we focus on two teams, which is core facility management and image data. And for in-person events, we'll have travel grants available. 
Uh, I would also like to mention a couple of paid opportunities because not all topics can be covered by the imaging scientists or by the imaging community. So one of the excellent training courses by Northwestern Kellogg School of Management. So it focuses on leadership and management in core facilities and specifically aimed at directors or managers, administrators of core facilities. And the second opportunity is uh, training provided by HFP Consulting. So this is a uh, company that is oftentimes working with various imaging networks and infrastructures, for example, CTLS, German Bioimaging, Bioimaging UK, uh, Bioimaging North America, and also we have worked with them as Global Bioimaging, and they provide excellent training. Even though it's a paid opportunity, what can be done to promote um, participation of imaging, uh, imaging community members is to provide registration fees, is to cover registration fees for those programs. And this has been done successfully by Bioimaging North America in their in their professional education program, I believe. So this is where they covered registration fee for several courses, and that actually includes a course at Northwestern Kellogg School of Management, and also their course that was jointly organized with Bioimaging North America. So this is where um, imaging community can actually support their members uh, to participate in those paid courses. Next, I would like to quickly talk about independent learning. So there are quite a few platforms available already. So that includes MyScope, which is developed by Microscopy Australia, and it's focused on light and electron microscopy. It has some very unique features. So that includes simulators of various microscopes. Uh, I think you can also tailor a module to your audience if you want to teach your core facility users, and you can also convert their convert the module to PDF if you want to share it with your colleagues or your users. Uh, what's also important is the ability to find training material, and you can do that in databases. So right now we have a microlist that is available. So microlist is, uh, was created by Jennifer Waters, um, and it's already available for light microscopy. Uh, anybody can post a listing there. And also at the moment, the Microscopy DB is being developed. So this is a database that will host listings for light and electron microscopy, and it's been developed by, by Imaging North America. And one of the great advantages of Microscopy DB is to be able to implement this database into your own website through the API interface. Uh, those databases not only contain material for training, but also a uh, list of conferences, jobs, software tools, and many other uh, resources that are useful for imaging scientists. At Global Bioimaging, we have also decided to develop a virtual training platform, which is different from MyScope. So this is where you can create a module, which is highly thematic, structured, and curated. And currently we have nine uh, categories and 26 modules in those categories, and they look something like this. So every single module is created to include as much useful information as possible so that uh, you don't have to use a search engine. Okay, moving on to the mentoring, uh, there are also uh, uh, mentoring programs available. So uh, as Gary has mentioned, there's RMS mentoring programs that has been set up in 2022, and it includes two tracks, the personal mentoring track, which is for career development and soft skill learning. And the second is application coaching track. So this is where you can learn a technology or software. Uh, in the United States, ABRF has also had a very successful mentoring program, which has uh, been running for quite a few years. And on the regional level, CTLS has a mentorship a program that has been quite successful. So if you would like to implement a mentoring program on a national or regional level, you can always get in touch with the contacts there and you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, lastly, I would like to mention that there are a lot of resources already available. A lot of the programs already available for imaging scientists. Uh, not all of them are available to all imaging scientists. Sometimes you need to be part of the, of the network or of the infrastructure, but you can always set up those platforms or those um, opportunities on your national or regional level. And I thank you for your, uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Glev. Um... So now it's my pleasure to introduce Andres Kamai. I think all of you already know him. 
um, his executive committee of the Latin American Bioimaging Machine and the principal investigator of the grant that was supported by Chan Sackenberg in the last uh, call, specifically targeted to the lab. So thanks, uh, Janelle. Thanks to everybody for being here again. Thanks to the wonderful talks we had. Thank you, Kerry, uh, for being there on the other side. <laughs> Hello. So I just want to briefly uh, give an overview of the uh, actions that we're going to have in LABI for the next three years. We were going to have this as a separate session, but um, and we thought it would be good to include that since we have an important uh, training part. So just to give you a, a lot of the overview about LABI, you already know, most of you know very well, some of you already heard from the first talk that we had um, yesterday. I think the, uh, I was, I'm not going to talk about the, the LABI mission and vision that we, we already discussed a little bit yesterday. Um, but in general terms, um, you have, uh, I think you have that idea and for the sake of time, we're going to move to give, first of all, the, the welcome to Andres. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening here. Okay. I think you already know, uh, Andres Oliver, we call him. <laughs> and yes, he does deserve a big round of applause. He, he's he's uh, the new member of the team and he has had the, the very difficult task to join us in the middle of a rush uh, for organizing this and in a very particular moment of his personal life. He's about to be a father now. So uh, this has that double the, the value for, for all the effort he has put on this and many of this organization uh, is supported by his work. So personally, and as a group, we thank you very much, Andres, and you will all be hearing from him a lot, hopefully for the next three years. He is gonna be running the network uh, from an, an executive point of view and helping us. He has a, ba uh, a background in biology and he's also done a master in public policy. So. He's got a very, very uh, unique background, difficult to find here in Uruguay. And uh, I think he will be a great part of the team. So once again, thank you and welcome to the team, Oliver. Um, so, which one is to go? So a couple of things about the missions that, for, that we have for the three, the next three years, the specific tasks that are mainly based on what we propose to CCI for the next three years. So uh, going to, Vlad, as Vladimir Sel said, we try to focus on very little things, uh, minimum goals that we could achieve. And one of them is uh, to create and maintain a, a website that can serve as, uh, as a platform for communication and to n get to know each other. Many of the actions that we have talked before uh, are going to be centralized through the network that is being uh, the website that is being uh, under construction now. And then we ask support, apart from having uh, Oliver on the team, that, which was a very important part of what we think it's necessary for running the network. Uh, we have uh, three training programs. So um, I'm going to try to describe very briefly the three of them. We put them like increases access to bioimaging training. And this is a program. All of them uh, share one common thing. So for being able to be eligible for this, either as a uh, so being eligible for a fellowship to travel or to attend to a course or to a training opportunity, you have to be registered in LAVI. So this is a way we thought to promote that the people register and make uh, uh, a visible registration and part of the community. Uh, this first program is to travel. To, we will cover transportation, registration, and lodging expenses to a certain extent. We're not going to cover all of it. So, uh, but to attend to training opportunities uh, along Latin America, and this is open for every 
imaging scientists, okay? So this would be, we will run this every year, we'll make a, a call yearly, and all, if you have a course that you would like to be eligible for getting fellowship for this, you have to register that course in, in the LABI platform. And the same, if you have to, if you want to attend to that course and want to be eligible for a fellowship, you have to be registered as well. The same thing, the, the concept is, is, is the same for all of it. Uh, but in this case, the training program two is exclusively for imaging scientists working uh, in imaging course. So we're trying to, uh, in a way, promote the training and the expertise and uh, of imaging core facility staff. So we have a, a particular training program for them. It's the same concept, but in this case, you have to be part of a, of a core facility. And the third one is a kind of a job shadowing, and this is intended to, to do long stays in a, in a particular place that, all, again, if you have a core facility and you have a particular technique or instrumentation that you have and you want to share your expertise, you should be able to register that in the LABI platform. And then people can uh, apply to do a two week, uh, one, two week uh, internship there. And that can be uh, all sorts of things from uh, knowing how to handle a core facility or uh, a specific technique or whatever it's involved in the whole range of diverse activities that we run as facilities, okay? And, um, the other, the other uh, goal that we had with this meeting was to try to organize these kind of events that we think are very important to get to know each other better, to interact directly in person. So this is the first one that we organize also with the help of other funding agencies. Uh, but the, the idea is that we are going to try to synergize with other things going on in the region. In this, in this case, this year we had like a, we organized together with Global Bioimaging. So we thank very much the, the generous uh, of, of them to being, bringing their meeting here, which is our meeting as well. So this is a very nice uh, example of what we want to promote, trying to synergize efforts. So even though for us, may, may be crazy experience now, I think it's, it's better for all of us. So, uh, and also this year we have organized a course together with Janilia Farm uh, Imaging Center with Leon that will be here tomorrow. So we kind of put together three activities that might be important for the whole Latin American community. And the same thing, okay. And um, this is, Oh, what I wanted to present now, we're looking for hosts for holding the next two years, meet the next meetings. Uh, so we will discuss that in the assembly. How, to, how are we going to do that? But we will have at least, thanks to CCI, two, two more years to go. We can move on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Andres. Uh, I think Larry has a, a lot of activities to do. And I want to thanks to all, uh, Kerry, Blebra. Hildare, um, Hernan, and Andres, all great presentation. And I think all the programs are really amazing. So we have a lot of uh, things to do in the next three years.